Hello and welcome back to Psyche Truth. My name's Abby and today we will be doing a video on the back, massaging the back, working the lower back, mid back and upper back. If you have pain, scoliosis, any issues, this might be the one for you. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna tune into the nervous system, which is what I like to do with every client. Tune into the breath. Start to notice any discrepancies, any imbalances. But simultaneously, my goal is to bring her into relaxation. Long strokes, keeping them smooth and consistent. We really, really help. The brain enjoys predictability. It kind of has the ability to relax the most in those predictable motions. So creating things like rhythm and consistency in your massage will help cradle the nervous system into a more centered and calm state of being. Jostling can also help. Really important around the spine to notice what areas allow you to jostle and what areas feel a little bit too tense. Don't really want to move like that. They don't want to give. You know, actually animals, dogs, wolves in the wild will shake off their trauma and kind of jostle their whole body after brawls or fighting or even just when they're cold. It's a neural trick. It helps them to release that fight or flight in their bodies and move on. It's very animalistic and it's very instinctual for them. But it is nice as humans who are also part of the animal world to bring in the same tools to help shake off our own trauma shake up our own fight or flight, our own challenges. Just through a little bit of jostling, you'd never think that could help. But that must be why we rock our babies to sleep. <laughs> You notice a little bit more tension and more rounding out on the right side. As I work her back with these longer strokes, I'm gonna pull my fingers right under her collarbone into her pec. And create length underneath that collarbone all the way to the front of her shoulder. Every massage is different. Every massage therapist is different. But ultimately, you don't have to do the same techniques and pressure on each side because most of the time, we're not symmetrical. We wrap around our center line and we utilize our talents and our innate strengths, and we usually cope with our weaknesses. And this creates kind of a back and forth around the spine. So what we do to her left, we might not do to her right. That is in 
especially important when you're dealing with something like scoliosis. In scoliosis, it's even more true. Each side will be different. Don't feel restricted. Now I'm gonna use my elbow here as a tool. I am not gonna dig in as hard as I can. I know this tool is powerful already. Just tracing her rector muscles up her spine, catching a little bit of the rhomboid, the lower traps right in here, and then up into the rhomboid with the scapula. I can feel her tensing underneath me, so I am lightening my pressure as I get to these kind of more gnarly areas. So distract the brain if they get a little too tensed up. Start pulling them in different ways. Go to a different area. I'd like to take a minute shout out to our patrons Alex L Bava 26 and Joanna Quinn I particularly like to elongate and traction the obliques and the sides I have found in my practice many people disregard the sides of their carriage their core their abdomen a great experience to get someone to contact those sides of the body. These muscles in here help you do things like lift your arm, breathe properly, posture your neck, expand your rib cage. They deserve to be touched and nurtured. I feel as I keep my strokes long and smooth, her nervous system is slowing down. Tuning out, really relaxing. Getting to the rhomboids and kind of this under the scapula can be really nice. We get a lot of pain here. I really like to get to these rhomboids towards the end. Typically, we have a lot of hunched over and rounded out in the upper back or extremely straight. hard to tell sometimes whether the source of the pain is found in the mid-back or if the back is a symptom. So in hopes of not over lengthening the upper back, I usually leave it for the end.
I'm giving myself a little leverage. This right shoulder has a lot of muscle development. I'm grabbing onto her lats and stripping and tracking the rhomboid at the same time. Instead of engaging her rhomboid, she tends to engage this lat. That's what the muscle development's really telling me. So we're gonna coerce her into seeing. You can engage here differently. And all right, and get the trap. Go back to long, smooth movements. And get into the left rhomboid. here I'm just pinning down somewhat of an elusive muscle and using the jostling to wake it up make it a little bit less intense said the spine likes to wrap so what I'm feeling is the right shoulder is really wrapping around the spine and connected to the left hip which is not uncommon we tend to cross across the body to create stability and balance and tug in the opposite direction. It's this very expansive feeling. While you're doing this, they can breathe into their belly and really fill the back with air. It's nice to have pressure in the opposite direction than usual. I'm just clipping right under her occiputs with Curl of my finger. And simultaneously doing a little bit of traction on the lower back. And creating length in the spine. our massage. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you liked that video and if you did, check out our Patreon page. Otherwise, I hope to see you next week. Join us
Join us for 14 and 30 day programs, hour long classes, and much more on our yoga app, Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. It's free to download and features a variety of wellness content, including yoga, fitness, Pilates, guided meditations, and interviews with dozens of wellness experts. 